Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm back again with our one of our favorite guests, Jenny K. Parks. Hi. Hi, it's great to be back. Um, Jenny is here today to talk to us about triangles, triangles, one of the most common shapes in quilting, but also a place where things can go awry. Yes, triangles can be very trying. Yes. Definitely, definitely. Well, I've had a lot of experience putting together triangles. This quilt that I brought here today has 300 half square triangles. That's a lot. That's a lot. And it really put me through my paces yeah. because there's different fabrics by different manufacturers, different thicknesses. I mean, it was just and really different sizes. Different sizes. It was very challenging. Mm -hmm. And if you look closely, there's some where I matched it exactly, mm -hmm. and others where it just. Uh, just not quite, it's close, but Pretty not good. quite what Pretty I want. Good. Which, you know, when it's on a bed, you know, no one When cares. it's on a bed, you, it doesn't matter. And when you put this up on the wall and stuff, you say, oh, that's lovely, and nobody's yeah. going to really notice. But we as quilters notice, and it makes a difference to us. Right. So I want to show you some things and how to get it to work right and whatnot. So here. All right, look at this. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Now, why is that perfect? Because it's not sewn. Because it's not sewn. It's not made by a human being. Yeah. That's why it's perfect. When humans work on it, we have issues. We have things we have to work out. And that's kind of what I want to get across today, is it, that it's... This is cheater, this is cheater this cloth. This is cheater Just, cloth, yeah. right. This is printed, no piecing involved with this no. whatsoever. And the thing about putting together triangles is, is we need to keep the perspective of its, its progress, not perfection. What's the next part we're going to work? How can I fix this thing? What can I adjust here? What can I do this time to make it a little bit different? And the thing that helps you to get good triangles is both are both technique and time. Yeah. So I'm going to share with you some techniques, and you put in some time, and it'll progress. Mm -hmm. The idea of a perfect quilt or perfectly piecing stuff, I just want you to imagine that's like a balloon, and you're going to let go of that balloon, and it's going to fly away. You say, OK. And there it's it goes. Gone. And now, now I'm going to figure out what I did wrong and try to fix it and do it better the next time. Very good. Okay. So just so we have an understanding of terms here, um, when you cut off your points of a triangle, you know, then the triangle's kind of pointless. No point to it at all. It, so examples of cutting off the triangles would be like there, right. here, there. Oh, that's just about perfect. Yep. But then you can see on this side, yeah. not so much. Yeah. And, you know, trial and error, you practice, and this, this was one of my very early, early ones like mm -hmm. that. So you can see the mistakes that I made, and I needed to grow from that. Mm -hmm. This is a sample that I teach when I do beginning quilting. In fact, this is my second class. If anybody's had a little bit of experience with sewing, this is the one they show up for. And we do the half square triangles, and I teach them how to get those points and the intersections just right. Mm -hmm. Not perfect. I don't say perfect anymore. Just right. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. My favorite thing to do, and we're going to talk mostly today about half square triangles. We're going to focus on that. My favorite thing to do with half square trials, triangles is the Lemoyne star. I love it. I think it's exciting, and there's so many variations. At, you know, just by tweaking the colors, mm -hmm. you can make it happen. But this one, I mean, you can see well, the intersections there. Ha, I nailed it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> so trial and error, practice, techniques, time, putting in. You can help. You can get up to that point. And do it. So I'm going to show you how to do basic one method to do the half square triangles. Okay. In my webinar, I'm going to cover several methods to do half square triangles. Right. Several methods to put things together. But I'm just going to get you started. All right. Okay. So the first thing we need to think about is our fabric and our grain line. This matters so much with triangles, and the reason it matters is because you know everybody's got that fabric home from the store. Right, and you can look at it, and the salvage edges, they just don't line up. You think, oh, well, I'll just cut it along there. Yeah. No, no. And it's, don't it's, do that. Just, it's just the way it might get wound around the bowl. Exactly. It pulls and it gets distorted. Right. It just happens. It's a violent process. It's not mm -hmm. kind to the fabric at all. No, it's not. No, it's fairly violent. So 
But we want to have the green line because the green line is where it's the tightest, but it's in the middle part where it's going to have the stretch where you're on the bias. Right. Triangles inherently have a bias edge no right. matter what. You want to control that. You want to manage that to your advantage. So we want to know where it's going to be and how we're going to use it. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to rip the fabric. Now many stores will cut the fabric with the rotary cutter, which is fine, no problem. Other stores will rip. So I'm going to show you how to rip because when you do, it will rip only on the green mm -hmm. line, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to take a little snip. That's about an inch down or so. And it's just down enough so that I can get a grab on it, right? And I'll usually get a little bit of fabric if they cut with the rotary cutter. I'll get just a tiny bit more fabric yeah. in the store so yeah. I can make sure it's straight. That's smart. Yeah. And then you just hold it and rip it. And it feels violent, but it really does result in the perfect straight edge. The perfect straight, straight, edge. straight edge, and I will show you. It also feels very satisfying. It does. You're a little <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> you can pull that right apart. But if you can see, there's the little grain lines you can just see the green line. It's very clear yeah. on there, and it looks very different than the jagged edges that we get sometimes that we, that we put up with. All right, so I'm going to show you just a little bit about how I cut, and I think it's important to have good cutting technique because it, it depends on it, right? Everything, I mean, if you have, if you have 30 two triangles that you're going to put together, you know, that's, that's going to be the width of one row, say, 32 triangles, and you are a 32nd of an inch off on each one, you're going to be an inch off by the time you get to the end. Yeah. And sometimes you can make it work, but other times it doesn't. And what we want to strive for is to be as accurate as we possibly mm -hmm. can. This is one more step to help us to be more accurate. So I line this up, and I'm going to cut off the fuzz, and I just put a little bit over the line. I want to make sure I'm on point right there. And I'm just going to cut it. And you notice I am positioning myself not off to the side, not over here. I'm right in front. I'm ready to hunker mm -hmm. down and cut it. You don't want to go at funny angles because you'll get funny, funny wavy lines. I'm also cutting with the, with the fold towards me and the salvage edge away from me. If you've ever cut a strip of fabric, right? And you get that little little V yeah. thing happening in the middle. Mm -hmm. Well, if I do happen to get the little V, it's at the end with salvage, and I might not even use that part. But if it's here in the middle, I gotta work around it, right? There you go, right. So, so this is why I cut that direction. So I'm just gonna cut through, nice and straight. And as I'm cutting, I'm eyeballing what's happening up here at the top too. So if I need to make any minor adjustment along the way, I got it. Okay. So very simple. I think that is an important cutting technique. Make sure you're on the grain line and that your cutting is straight and accurate. All right, so let's go on to the block here. Okay. What we're gonna make, this little fella. I'll take that. Thank you. Is a, it's a little pinwheel. Get that out of the way. Just a very simple pinwheel block made with four half square triangles. Ta-da! We can do that. Mm -hmm. That's easy. So you take your strips of fabric and I think, always think it's funny, and it used to really irritate me, how um, the measurements for triangles would be like three and seven eighths. Mm -hmm. There's always like a seventh eighth or an eighth in there. Yes. And it's because of how the triangle has to fold over. It has to accommodate that unusual fold. So that's why you get unusual measurements right. <laughs> with it. So we just go along and we cut it, cut a couple pieces off. I like to cut them in the stacks like this with the two pieces together so then you know those two are gonna match. Yeah. I mean, ideally. It's time saving. Yes, and ideally all of your squares that you cut to three and seven eighths, which is what I cut these, they should be exactly the same, but again, yeah. I'm a human being yeah. and <laughs> stuff happens yeah. and I don't do it just right. I try, but I don't. All right, so here we have our pieces together. They're stacked up there, ready to go. And now I'm gonna draw a line and I'm gonna go from the top to the bottom, just like, just through the middle here. I'm gonna put my ruler on there. And I'm gonna lay, I'm, in, I'm using this marking pin. Now there's a whole variety of different kinds of pins you can use. I'm using this red one, so it'll be sure to show right. today. But um, I have used, I've used pencils, I've used pins, I've used whatever's handy yeah. <laughs> sometimes just to get the job done. And sometimes I'm having, I'm measuring just a little slightly off to the side. Yeah. I'm not exactly on there so that I can accommodate the, 
width of the marker. Mm -hmm. You want to remember that. I think I was getting some skewed off because I wasn't accommodating that. And again, just like a 22nd of an inch, that's enough to skew it. It, will. it, it is. is. All right, so I'm going to make sure it's on there. Oh, no. Nervous. Everybody's watching. We're not judging, though. Oh, okay. There are no quilt police. No quilt police. Involved here. And, of course, my pen doesn't work. Oh. But if it had, <laughs> here is exactly what it would look like. So a line drawn right through the middle there. Voila. There you go. So my pin did work. Point. My pin worked at some point. Mm -hmm. All right, then I'd take that over to the machine and I would line it up, of course, and you just chain piece. So you stitch a quarter of an inch from this mark, and come down to this side, and then you come back around and you stitch a quarter of an inch from that mark. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I, my students always get such a kick out of it because they, they cannot figure out how this is going to work, but it's going to look like that and then you just cut it through the middle, voila, and you have your two pieces. And you and just press them open? You press them open, it's kind of like an epiphany. Oh, look at what I made! I made triangles right there. I, I think it's really cool. It's, it's kind of an exciting... It's fun to hear that, you know, <laughs> you, you get used to it, you get used yes. to it, and you're like, oh, it's just, that's just the way it's done, and it's, it's fun to hear the excitement right. of, of people who are new to the technique. And, and to they'll, they'll have little panicked faces. I, I don't understand where she's gonna go. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. It's okay. It's all right, it's gonna be fine. All right, so now we want to join make this them. section yes. of our triangle, of our, of our pinwheel here. And we wanna join these little fellas together. So, to do that, and you notice when I pressed it, I pressed these both in the same direction so that when we rotate them, they're, they're gonna snuggle up next to yeah. each other. They're gonna wanna be very nice to each other. Now, now I've lined these up on top of each other. And what you wanna do is make sure that it, it'll, it'll look like this, mm -hmm. that they will all be snuggled right next to each other. You don't want it skewed off mm -hmm. or overlapping too much in any direction. You want it to be just right. You just snug those, butt those right up yes. together. Yes. You can feel it. Yes, you can. When it clicks in, you can kinda, aha, got it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put a little pin there just to hold it securely. Mm -hmm. All right, let's bring this fella over. Beautiful. You can pin the whole way along if you want to. Um, I say pin to your level of comfort. Absolutely. Like driving in the rain. You know, <laughs> go as fast as you feel right, comfortable. Right. Right. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, it's a pop quiz for the teacher. <gasps> Look at that. Looks good. Look at that. They Looks good. Together. Yeah, they, they, Love they, it. They, those points meet perfectly, and you have that seam allowance there so that when you join them together. Exactly. Yeah, and that seam allowance will throw off beginners too. Mm -hmm. <gasps> but it doesn't quite meet at the. It's not supposed to. Right. It's okay. Deep breath, it's all right. Okay, so now we're gonna put together our last little set to make, to produce this. And I have a three pin method. Okay. Okay. And I have, a, I have other methods too, but I'm gonna show you okay. the three pin right here. Okay, so you see how there's this little intersection, this X here. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna put it right through that little X. Right in there, and it should pop out. Look at that, right there at that point. Let's see. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Now I'm going to want to push this right through the X on my other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to wiggle that in there. Sometimes it takes a little fiddling. Oh, look at that. We did it just right. Okay. So now, now I keep that pin in there while I'm doing the rest of my pinning, and I make sure it's straight. If the pin is uh, wobbly or, or going in a different direction, that tells me that it's not straight and mm -hmm. I haven't speared right through the whole thing, mm -hmm. okay? So I'll, I'll adjust that and make sure that's nice and straight, straight up and down. And then I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna go through the seam allowance here, you know, all the way through the seam allowance and the whole thing on one side, mm -hmm. okay? And then I'm gonna take the pin, line these up a little bit more, and I'm going to go through the seam allowance on the other side. And then when we're all done, I'm going to have you press this for me. 
Okay. Okay, so you just make sure that pin is straight up and down before you call it good, all right? And then we're gonna take that pin out. We don't need it, it has served its purpose. And then I'm gonna stitch over there. Oh boy, it's another, another pop quiz for the teacher. All right. Now you wanna think when you are pressing triangles, you don't wanna pull them too much or skew them. And if your pattern says, you know, press in this direction, each one, I say follow the pattern. Mm. It knows some secret that's in right, there. Right, right. Yeah. If, if, if the pattern writer is bothering to tell you which way to press your seams. It's gonna be important. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's to make things easier for you in the long run. Yes. Now, and when I'm sewing this too, I wanna make sure I'm going right over right over that X intersection. Sometimes on the bottom, I will miss it. Sometimes things just slip yeah. and I'll, I'll rip out that little part and do that little part yeah. again. Okay. Okay, so you can see I stitched, oh, just, I'm, I'm a little shy. Look oh. at that, I'm just yeah, a tiny just bit a shy. Bit. Let's, let's see how I did on this side. Oh, again, I didn't do it right on that one. I'll show you on this one because well, I see. did it right there. Okay. Let's open it up All and right, see. Let's Moment see. of truth. Da, 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 da. Ah, ah, it looks pretty good to me. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good, but we can do it. Get them snuggled in there a little bit more. And like I did on this one. Yeah. That's much better. I'm much happier with that one. See, I'm still operating off of the hill, like, mommy, mommy, I need you. So uh, that's, yes, that's good for that's me. Good. I, would, I would totally live with that. And sometimes but done if, is way better than perfect. Oh, absolutely. But if that matters to you. If, yes. Depending on the, what you're making the exactly. quilt for, exactly. then you can rip out and, and re-sew if you need to. So, right. That, that's that's the that. goal we're aiming at. But yeah, no, I, I think this is good okay. too. Yeah. Did you yeah. want to press that real quick? Or? Yes. Let's okay. do press Which it. Which way do you press? Do you just press the seams open or just... Well, I want you to press to set the seam because okay. I do think that's important. Sometimes the thickness of the thread is enough to make a difference, sure. believe it or not. And I always... I, Personally, I always give just a little finger. Yes, or and sometimes I'll tug a little bit, but you want to be careful not to tug too much. No. Because you can take that totally out of square. Yeah. <laughs> well, these are great tips. Thank you. They're great tips, and you are doing more tips, going yes. more in depth in your web seminar. Yes, half square triangles, flying geese, paper piecing, the whole shebang. All right, well, you can find out more about Jenny's web seminar at quiltandsewshop.com. And um, thank you so much for being here today. Thank we look you for having to the me. Web seminar. Um, be sure to join us next time. We look forward to seeing you. Take care. Bye bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.